So here we're going to use logarithmic differentiation to find the derivative of the function y equals x raised to the x power. Now using logarithmic differentiation is the only way I know how to solve this type of problem because not only is the variable the base, but the variable is also the exponent. So this function is what we call a super exponential where it's a, a variable base and a variable exponent. So it's a not just an exponential, but a super exponential, okay? So what do we do first? Well, there's four steps in using logarithmic differentiation. Step one, I take the log of both sides, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the log of both sides. So I ln both sides. Now, um, once I ln both sides, the purpose of this is so that we can get the x here out of the exponent. And so log property says the exponent comes out front, and that's what we did there. Now that we have the variable out of the exponent, I'm going to implicitly differentiate both sides. I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x on both sides. So the derivative of ln of y with respect to x, okay, I treat y as a chain rule, and so remember natural log of x derivative, I'm sorry, let me put natural log of x, if I take the derivative of this with respect to x, that's just 1 over x, right? So, um, the derivative of natural log of y is 1 over y, but then since y is a chain rule, I don't know what y is with respect to x, I have to take the derivative of y, y prime or dy dx, okay? And on this other side here, I have a product of two functions, so I have to use the uh, product rule. So it's the first times the derivative of the second, the derivative of ln x is one over x, plus the second ln x times the derivative of the first, derivative of x is just one, okay? Now, step three, I wanna solve for dy dx. For this particular problem, I have it written as y prime, okay? So those two are the same thing there, so I wanna solve for that. How do I solve for that? Well, first, let's simplify the left side or the right side. X times 1 over X is just 1. And then 1 times ln X is just ln X. How do I get y, by, y prime by itself, dy dx? I multiply both sides by Y. Step 4. I replace Y with the original function because I want my function dy dx, the derivative y pri to be in terms of x, okay? So what does y equal? y is equal to x raised to the x power. So I'm gonna replace y with x raised to the x right here. And now I have dy dx in terms of x. Okay, now that we've done the logarithmic differentiation and we've followed our steps here, I want to find the equation of the tangent line at x equal to e. So I want to find the derivative evaluated at x equal to e. So what do I do? I take my take my function. I plug everywhere I see an x. I'm going to plug in an e. So I have an e here. Now y equals x to the x. So that means that x1 is x, and then I have e and e here, so that's e raised to the e for the y value. So this is the point in our equation. We need to figure out the slope at x equal to e. And so to do that, I plug it in. Everywhere I see an x, I plug in an e. So what happens here? ln of e is actually equal to 1, so I have 1 plus 1, which is 2, so I have 2 times e to the e. So my slope here is 2e to the e. If 
I'm going to use find the equation of the tangent line, I use the point slope form. Point slope form takes into account x1, y1. And then my slope m. Okay. So I'm going to plug in those values that I have there. So the first value I plug in, I plug in E right there. The next value I plug in is Y1, which is E to the E. And then the last value for M, I plug in 2E to the E. And so this is the equation of the tangent line. All right? If it doesn't ask you to solve, uh, for Y, don't solve for Y. Just stop right here. There's nothing wrong with stopping here unless it tells you to keep going. But it just says find the equation of line, so we're good. Now, uh, Y equals X times sine X divided by square root of X plus 2. To find the derivative, not only are you going to have to use the quotient rule, you'll have to use a product rule here and you'll have to use the uh, chain rule down here. That's a lot of work. So what we're going to do instead of doing all that work is we are going to use logarithmic differentiation to simplify our work for us. So think about your steps. Step one, LM both sides. When I LM both sides I get natural log of Y equals natural log of that nasty thing right there. And so now I need to simplify this nasty thing using log properties. You think about log ln of a times b is ln a plus ln b. And ln um, c divided by d is ln c minus ln d. So when you multiply inside the argument, it turns into addition. And when you divide in the argument, it turns into subtraction. You subtract what's in the denominator. Okay? So I'm going to use those properties for logs. Remember, logarithm is just an exponent, so it's kind of like our exponent rules are at work. So I have in the numerator multiplication of two functions. So I'm adding these two things together, log of log x plus log sine x. And then here I have in division, so I'm going to subtract the log of the square root. Now, if you remember, I can rewrite this as x plus 2 raised to the 1 half, right? So if I rewrite this as x plus 2 to the 1 half, when I'm taking the natural log, what does the power rule say? It says that the one-half can come out front. So um, when I bring the one-half out front, that multiplies with that negative that's already there, and so I get negative one-half ln x plus 2. Now, once I log it, I implicitly differentiate with respect to x. And when I do that, I'm going to get... Um, chain rule, I have to treat y as 1 over y times the derivative of y, okay? And then um, this piece here, derivative of ln x with respect to x is just 1 over x. Derivative of ln sine, so ln of stuff is 1 over the stuff times the derivative of the stuff. What's the derivative of sine x? It's cosine x. And um, this one here, simplified to this here. So um, I have the negative one half that's pulled out front, right? So I'm just going to pull that constant out front with my scalar rule. And um, the natural log of x plus 2, well, I put x plus 2 in the denominator, and then I take the derivative of x plus 2, but the derivative of x is 1 and the derivative of 2 is 0, so the numerator is just still 1. Okay? Now I can simplify this a little bit more to get y by itself, our last or our, our second to last step. Um, we uh, solve for dy dx, but I'm actually going to put the fourth step in there too. I'm going to replace my y 
with uh, this nasty thing right here, right? That's step four. And so um, let's simplify this a little bit. So I have one over X. Uh, cosine over sine is cotangent. And then if I distribute the two in the denominator, I get negative one over two X plus four. And so instead of putting a, instead of multiplying both sides by Y here, I'm gonna nail the last step. I'm gonna replace Y with the uh, function in terms of x. And so when I do that, I get x times sine x over square root of x plus two times one over x plus cosine or cotangent x minus one over two x plus four. And you could imagine how difficult that problem would have been had we tried to just do this straight up to get to this answer right here. So logarithmic differentiation is meant to help your life to make it easier, not harder. Um, just an interesting technique and one in which, you know, say you had something like, uh, I don't know, sine x raised to the x power. You know, how would you take the derivative of that function, right? You have to use logarithmic differentiation. So anytime you have some variable base and a variable exponent, you should automatically be thinking, okay, I'm going to use logarithmic differentiation. All right, guys.